and um, we were getting getting sort of ready to leave, and he, he said, um, I think I'm going to whack ten on on Maxi. Do you want do you want some as well? And I, I said, yeah. I, I gave him ten dollars, and, and um, he placed the bet um, on Maxi to kick the first goal. As a result of his conduct. Heath Shaw will be suspended for 14 matches, six of which will be suspended. He will also be fined $20,000. In round nine, the same as I have every week of my AFL career, uh, I, after I find out my role and uh, who I'll be playing on, etc., uh, I spoke to family members, um, as I said, the same as I do every single week that I play. Uh, I had no idea until yesterday that they had used that information to bet. They'd never done it before. Nick Maxwell will be sanctioned $10,000, 5000 suspended in relation to his offence. I know the rules. I know um, we've been educated in that sort of regard. And um, obviously it was a spur of the moment decision that was, that was stupid and, and, and yeah. Do you take us back to the day when you parted with the $10 and gave it to your mate for the bet? I think it was a Saturday and went down to have a few bet on, bets on the horses. Um, was there with a mate and obviously discussed about the Maxi starting forward previous. And um, he said he was going to put a bet on. Did you want 10 bucks on? And I just sort of without thinking just go, yeah, sweet. As I said, you don't think about the consequences and, and sort of the ramifications of your actions at the time until it hits you right in the face. If I, if I got to choose my penalty, I definitely wouldn't have given me eight weeks, but um, when you do something wrong, you don't get, you don't get that opportunity. Um, I, I did the wrong thing. I understand that. I broke the rules. Um, I got caught. So like, my fate was in, in the AFL's hands. And, um, I think the AFL needed to make a stand on that sort of thing, and, and there's a lot of stuff around gambling in the AFL. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, I was, I was the one on the chopping block, and, um, I've definitely learned my mistake from my mistake and um, yeah, I understand fully. It's been a long eight weeks, that's for sure, so I'm, I'm just looking forward to, to going forward and, yep. and put my hand up for selection come that first week of the finals. He's got a running doors, he's just come off the bench. He says, you, Shepard, I'm the runner. A couple of bounces, a triple, a quadruple from 50 metres out. Shaw running towards goal. It's going to be a goal. Brilliant play. One of the goals of the year from Heath Shaw. I've had some pretty good conversations with Mick and, you know, he's, he's pretty open about um, where he sees me. Um, he, he pretty much said from word go, you, if you get yourself, just get yourself in the best position you can to put your hand up for selection and to be right to go. Um, I'm confident that I can come back and into the team and, and do my role and play my role and, and that I'm fit enough to. Um, but team going so well, at the moment, and um, yeah, it, it's it, it'll be hard, um, but I won't be I won't be sorry if someone misses out for me playing in that final because um, I'm definitely ready to go and I want to play that first final. Were you asking prior to that week leading to that game, or will you just present yourself as best you can and be told on a Thursday night that you're in? Um, yeah, I'll, I don't know. How, I'll, I think I'll just just go about my business um, like a normal player coming back from injury or or suspension uh, earlier in the week you, you get an idea of what Mick, what, what he's thinking and, he, and he'll let you know so I'd assume I'd know early in the week if I am or if I'm not um, so yeah I'm, I suppose it's, it's a little bit of a nervous wait but uh, I'm confident that I'm, I'm ready to go and, and that they'll pick me. You referred before to being in a situation like this some years ago. Can you sit here today and say there won't be a third situation? No, I probably can't. I can't say that I'm not going to because you never know what happens. Um, I suppose I've I put myself in those situations. Yeah. I made decisions that led to, to getting into that situation. Um, hopefully I've learned from that and I don't put myself in the situations Again. Heath, do you owe Mick Malthouse? Do you owe Collingwood? Do you owe Collingwood fans for what's happened? Mick's a, he's a massive supporter of all players. He gets a long roll with, with all players. Um, and he's, he's that father figure to, to everyone. Um, he, like you always go through your ups and downs relationships with anyone, and, and even with the coach, but you always know when, when everything's 
cooled down and everything like that. He'll, he'll always bring you aside and he'll have a chat to you and he'll talk to you about your game and your improvements and all that sort of stuff. And with me, he's, he, he understands my personality. Um, I think he might have even missed me the last two weeks I've been in Arizona, so um, which, is, which is good. And you know, if you if you got that confidence from the coach, then it always helps you perform. And I've no doubt that if Mick gives me the all clear, then then I'll perform.